Okay, y'all, I've been meditating on this word for a couple of weeks, and it's concerning the fear of the Lord. Now, when you think about the fear of the Lord in, in the Bible, when the people, you'll see like several places where it will say um, the fear of the Lord was upon the people. The fear of the Lord was upon this group. This fear of the Lord was with so-and-so. So that would mean like this fear of the Lord was upon these people and it came with great benefits. Either they would not go to war, they would win a war. One scripture I read that they were blessed with houses, but the people lived in abundance and not just, you know, in a monetary way, but abundance where they were well, they were at peace. So when you live in the fear of the Lord, you're you have access to this place of covering, this place of peace with God. And so I wrote down that the fear of the Lord is connected to your depth of faith. Because if you fear God, that means you reverence, you respect him, then there's a certain dependency upon the rulership of God. You are completely dependent upon the Lord. If I fear God, I'm not afraid of him, but I respect him and I'm dependent upon him so much that, um, that I'm submitted to him. So when I fear God, I submit to God. Submission is the letting go of your own will. When we submit to God, we are saying, Lord, not my way, but your way. And I know we've said that, we've heard that a thousand times, but really think about it. If I submit myself to God, there are throughout and daily walk, y'all. So throughout the day, as I'm making decisions, as I'm um, communicating with people, if I'm submitted to God, I live in the fear of the Lord. That means I reverence and respect his will, his way. I'm doing things his way. I'm submitted to his way. Then I conduct myself in a certain way. Why do I conduct myself like that? Because I fear God. Because I am submitted to God. I am not concerned about what I want to do, what Tori wants to do, what my mind wants to do, what my flesh wants to do, what other people want me to do. I am submitted to God. This is walking in the fear of the Lord, y'all. So submission is faith dependent. So in order to, to get to a place of submission with God, where you submit to the rulership of the Lord, it takes faith. <laughs> Your natural man will not submit to what it doesn't trust. Mm, I'm going to say that again. Your natural man does not want to submit to what it doesn't trust. That's why faith is essential. To walk in the fear of the Lord, you must submit, but you must submit by faith. Submit by faith. Some of us won't submit to God because he hasn't proven himself in our lives. And not that God didn't do his job, but we haven't been conscious enough to really truly recognize the moves of God in our lives, to see where God is moving, to see what he has done, and, and to give him the credit for it. So to us, we haven't seen God do what he needs to do. So how am I going to submit to something I don't have faith in? How do I walk in the fear of the Lord and the reverence of God when I, I don't really have faith in that area to trust God like that? Because in order to be submitted, you have to have faith. You have to trust the Lord. So we depend on what we can see. That's the issue. Because faith, we know, according to Hebrews 11 and 1, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So when we, as in our carnal state, when we trust something, we trust it because we can see it, because we actually can experience it. I trust this chair because I can sit down in it and it holds me up. I've done it before and before. So it's proven to me. So with God, to really trust God like that, to submit to him and walk in the fear of him, I have to have some evidence. But guess what? Faith is your evidence. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So faith comes, your faith comes from within. It is not proven results, 
but is proven in the actions leading up to the results. I'm going to read that again. Faith comes from within. First, faith is within. The Bible tells us that every man has been given a measure of faith. So we have faith. We all have faith. It's all been, it's been given to us. It's on the inside of us. So faith does not come from sitting in the chair. Faith is something that is within us. So we, faith is not proven by the results. Faith is not proven by results. Like I sit down in the chair. Oh, now I believe this chair will hold me. That's, that's not faith. Faith is proven in the actions leading up to the results. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Substance, the actions of things hoped for. And the evidence, actions of things not seen. So I'm going to work backwards to, to get back to the beginning of this lesson. All right. Y'all hang in there. So I place my trust, my faith in God, although I can't see it, I can't taste it, I can't sense it. So in order to get to that place where I really submit unto the Lord, I have to have faith. I'm just going to have to, you know, try Jesus. <laughs> I'm going to have to try God. I am going to have to step out that boat. I am going to have to do the thing that I cannot see. I cannot taste it. I cannot touch it. I cannot experience it. But something on the inside of me, which is faith that comes from within, has to be pulled on. And that faith is what I will I will lean on. And that faith is from God. Like faith don't faith is not hope. Faith is not I wish. Faith is something from within that God has already given us that we have to pull on to go forward. Now, when I pull on this faith, I pull on it with, um, I, I pull from within and I choose to trust God. I choose to have faith in God. So it's a choice to pull on your faith. Your faith comes from within, but it's a choice. Like a made up mind. Anytime you choose to do something, it don't matter what nobody else tell you, you know, about that thing. If you believe it and that's what you want to do, you're going to do it. This is the same, same thing. That faith. God has given you a measure of faith. He's given you the ability to know that he's there. So you have to take that and, and, and really stand on it. Stand on it. You're going to take it. You're going to choose God. You're going to choose to trust God. And that is where your faith is going to be developed. I choose to have faith. So I submit to the will of God. Yeah, I choose to have faith. This what I just this is what I decide to do. I'm going to have faith. So then once I have faith, I submit to the will of God. Now, my faith and submission puts my life and my situation in God's hand. <laughs> That's the good part. I got so excited about y'all about this y'all. I mean, my faith because I choose to trust God. I submit to his will and his way. Whatever God wants me to do, however he wants me to do it. I am listening for the voice of God. I am reading my Bible. I am understanding the character of God. I'm doing the right things by God. The right and wrong by God. And not depending on what man has told you right and wrong is. By your own convictions that the Holy Spirit on the inside of you is leading and guiding you. So by your conviction, I am living by my convictions. I am submitted to the will of God. My faith is in him. And so that puts everything in my life into God's hand. That's good news, y'all. So now... God is responsible for what happens to me. Yes, when we submit to the will of God, when we submit, I, I always think about like going under, like submitting. When I submit to the covering of God, my faith is in him. Everything in my life is in God's hand. That's on you, God, because I'm here and I'm not doing what I want to do. I'm not doing what the world is telling me to do. I'm not doing what um, whoever is telling me to do. I'm doing what you want me to do, Lord. And in that submission, my life is in God's hand. And now God is responsible for what happens to me. 
God is responsible for what happens to you once you submit your life unto him. Hmm. Once you submit to his will and his way, once you get up under your God covering, because that is a covering that's there, and you submit to him, everything concerning you is at God's hand. It's God's responsibility to get you through it. It's God's responsibility to get you out of it. It's God's responsibility to provide for the vision that you have. It is God's responsibility, but we first must submit and we have to submit by faith. We cannot trust our senses. We cannot trust what we think. We have to lean not to our own understanding, but acknowledge the Lord our God. That that's that's living in the fear of God. When I acknowledge him, that means, hey, in every situation of my life, I'm asking God, what do you want me to do? God, what do I do from here? I even had in my personal life, I I decided that you know, meditating on this word, Lord, living in a fear of you. There, there are certain ways that I want to act out and, and, and be mad at somebody that I should be mad at. But I, it's, it's not about me. It's, it's not, I'm not submitted to Tori. I'm submitted to God. And God would not have me to act that way. I looked up, you know, the fruit of the spirit, love, joy, peace, long suffering, all those things ain't got nothing to do with being mad. It have nothing to do with being nasty. It have nothing to do with being petty. And I know a lot of us live in Pettyville, queen of Pettyville, king of Pettyville. But that's that's not the way of the Lord. That is not submitted to the will and the way of God. So we have to recognize that. So once I submit to God by faith, I am now God's responsibility. That's kingdom, y'all. That's what the kingdom is about. The king is responsible for what goes on in the kingdom. You and I are residents of the, we're citizens of the kingdom. And so God is responsible for us, but he is responsible for those that are submitted to his leadership, to his rulership. And so now when my faith is intact and I am submitted to the authority of God, I know how to, I know, uh, not I know, I now walk in the fear of the Lord. So I'm going to read that again. So now that my faith is intact, I understand that my faith comes within. I choose God. I choose the will of God. I am submitted to the authority of God. I understand that God is the king of the kingdom and whatever he wants to do, I'm checking in with him. Hey, God, what do you want to do? Okay, this is what we're going to do. All right. If I and and, I, and this is just more on a practical um um set that that you don't have to always check in with God. God gives us wisdom. He also gives us lessons. He he if we know the character of God, it's like you know your parents or you know your your boss. So you know there's certain things that they wit and they not wit. So that's how we have to know God. We know God is with some things and he's not with some things. So since we already know that, we don't have to consult with him every time. We just know that we live in his kingdom. We he is our ruler and so we are submitted to his leadership. We are submitted to his will. We are submitted to his way. And so now my submission, now my submission means I have to stay close to know what God wants. I have to study him and I have to learn him. So that's when we come into like, y'all are fixing my lashes. Don't mind me. <laughs> so that's when we come, when I say we have to stay close to God, that, that means that we have to continue to study him. We study him through the written word, through the Bible. We study him by spending time in prayer and meditation upon his word. Like me meditating on this word for these weeks, like it, it has it, it like the word takes root in you and then it grows. And then, you know, once once it comes out as fruit, like this is the fruit that's coming out in my life. But like I told you, like it even helped me personally. Um that's how we get to know God and we get to know his way 
the way of God, because there is a way that is right. There is a way um, of God and we get to know him through prayer. We get to know him through study. We get to know him through um, communication with other saints that that I, I have a girlfriend, Dee Dee, that I always talk to. Like we could always, like, we call him God. I call him God conversations. I don't know if she know I even say that, but I have these God conversations with her that I know she is always ready for. Like that's my, like, well, that's my soul sister, I call her. Um, but you have to have those people within your circle that you can you can talk about spiritual things with because that's what's going to strengthen your faith. That is what's going to get you to a place where you're able to walk in the fear of God, which means in the covering of God, huh. which that means that God will be fully responsible for you. But we have to work to get there. And I, there was this scripture. Um, let me see. Um, oh, I, I'll get to that. But I put like, so putting in the work, that's work. To get to know God is work. To study the word, to pray, to have those relationships where you can talk about God with other people of wise counsel, to um, attend church where there's teaching, Bible-based teaching about the word so you can grow in the word of God, so you can meet people of the faith, um, going to conferences, listening to spiritual gospel music, all of those things um, take, take effort. You're going to have to be intentional in order to build your faith. But so here are some scriptures I wanted to share on the fear of the Lord. So the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. That's Proverbs 1 and 7. Um, the fear of the Lord, uh, I know it says it's the, be the beginning of wisdom as well. And when you think about that, to fear God, to walk in that real fear of the Lord means that I walk in reverence of God. I walk in dependency of God. I, res I respect God to the utmost. And so that means it says it's the beginning of knowledge. What does that mean? That's, it's the beginning of knowledge and wisdom, meaning that once you get to that place where you are seeking, yearning, running after to live in the fear, dependency, reverence of God, you are becoming wise. You are becoming knowledgeable because it gives you understanding of all things. That means that you understand how God created the world. You understand the, I want to say like the hierarchy of, of what, what the kingdom of God really is because you're willing to submit you're you're coming to a higher place of knowledge, a higher place of understanding when you're no longer trusting yourself anymore, but you're walking according to the will of God, to the fear of God, to the uh, covering of God. You're coming to that. Psalm 34 and 11 says, come ye children, hear, hearken, sorry, not hear, but hearken unto me and I will teach you the fear of the Lord. All right, so Psalm 34 and 11 lets me know that the fear of the Lord is even something that is learned. It's a learned behavior. That was my baby. There's a learned behavior. You can learn the fear of the Lord. And that was one question I did have as I was meditating and studying the fear of the Lord. I was wondering, like, it sounded like almost as if it was something that is uh, nurtured by God or given by God. And when I found this scripture, it says, Come, come, ye children, and hearken unto me. Come to me, and I will teach you the fear of the Lord. So you can learn how to fear God, learn how to reverence God, learn how to respect God, learn how to submit to God. That lets me know that it is, it's a process. It's a process for me to get into a place where I know God enough to have the faith, <laughs> that my faith begins to work towards him, where I understand who he is and I submit to him. That's what it is. You can learn the fear of the Lord. So although we may love God and although um, we, we've received salvation, we've received Jesus Christ, but there is another level in God where when we walk in total submission to him, 
total submission, total respect, total reverence, where we are allowing God to um, orchestrate our lives. We're not leaning to our own understanding. We're looking to him for answers. We're looking to him for which way to go, which direction to go, how to act, how to speak, how to think. We are submitted to the Lord. Psalm 34 and 9 says, there is no want to them that fear him. <laughs> but there is no want to them that fear him. In the fear of the Lord, there's no want. Never seen the righteous forsaken. He supplies all of our needs according to his riches and glory. You never have to be worried or concerned because you live in the fear of the Lord. You understand that it is God that is your protector. God that is your provider. God that is your shield. You live in this fear of him. This reverence. This respect. This submission. And in the submission to him, there is no want but and and i want to elaborate on that not that it's just like no want like um no lack which is a thing that there's no lack but because your soul and your spirit is so in in line with what god is doing and you understand he will give you understanding of your process so there may be just as in the Bible, when Paul was in jail, when Joseph was in the pit, you know, these people went through different things, but they still maintained their faith in God because they lived in the fear of the Lord. They understood the process of, of God. They understood of living in submission to God, living in the kingdom of God, that God is the king and he's responsible for me. So if I'm in a pit right now, I know he's going to deliver me because I've submitted to his process. God is responsible for me as I live in the fear of the Lord. Job 28 and 28 says, the fear of the Lord is wisdom. Proverbs 8 and 13 says, the fear of the Lord is is to hate evil. I thought that was uh, that was interesting. The to fear the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Why? Because we're submitted to the way of God. The Bible tells us that God is love. So if we're submitted to the way of the Lord, then we're submitted to love. And we're not submitted to evil. So when those things that are evil, we hate those too. Because we don't want to be in line with anything that is not in line with God, y'all. So this word truly blessed me. I am going to continue to eat on it and continue to study it. Continue to allow it to, to change my life by the renewing of your mind. That's what we do. We study the word. We learn it. We hear it. And, and we keep chewing on it and meditating on it until... Something changes until our mind changes because there is so much peace. There is so much abundance. There is so much joy. There is so much well-being in the fear of the Lord. I hope this lesson blessed you because it definitely blessed me. I am going to continue to work to study the fear of the Lord and understanding how a life of submission to God is a life that he is definitely pleased with, but it's also a life that allows us to live in the liberty of him in the earth. So y'all stay tuned for our next lesson. And I don't know what to say. Y'all be blessed.